Well, I just realized that one of the things I really like to do is tell stories. But one of the problems is just about everybody who knows me has heard lots and lots of my stories. Now, recently I sort of pulled one on my wife because I told her a story about a wrestling match a long time ago. And she said, well, I've heard that story, Phil. And I said, well, I'm just practicing it to make it better. And I sort of feel like as I tell these stories on this YouTube project, I can say something about what I'm doing. And since it's recorded, nobody can say, well, I've heard it before. So the first story I want to talk about is my association with Christianity and religious studies. I'm a religious studies student at UW-Eau Claire, and I am a Christian who, out of logical necessity, believes in the divinity of the Christ. But I'm also a Christian apologist. And what that means is that I explain Christianity to non-Christians. But what I really think I'm doing most of the time is trying to somehow make up for the horrific things that have been done in Christ's name historically and say, well, there's something else, there's something better than that, and you're very nice people and don't always judge by the worst example. Recently, I had a situation where two or three days ago, I was not in a good mood. If I was speaking theologically, I would say that uh, it was kind of a long, dark night of the soul. And I realized that I have a very ambitious project here. It has to do with publishing, media, media production, giving voices to people who don't have voices, and getting my own writing out. But one of the problems that I have is that especially with Kindle publication, uh, Amazon Kindle pub publication where you can find several of my, my books already, is it's really hard kind of nasty work. And so an interesting thing happened where this guy walked into my office with his friend. He was waiting for me inside my office at Banbury Place. And I wasn't expecting him. They were kind of well dressed. And I said, what, what WTF do you think you're doing here? He said, oh, we're sorry. We, I'm a writer and I have these books and I'd like you to look at them. And I remember saying, well, you, you sell them on Kindle and you formatted them, right? And then I ripped it out of his hand, knowing that if his poetry was at all decent, that I could promote him, and he in turn could help me with my Kindle formatting pro projects. And what it turns out is that Matt Habak, when he sees this, will hear me say, very interesting and promising young writer. He started writing, he's this, this, he's 26 years old, the same age I was when I started writing and actually thinking about it. So I'm just going to read a few of his poems, out, maybe just one, to draw attention and say that this, this is one of the, I'm actually going to buy a copy of this on Kindle. And, you know, to actually buy a poetry book is a pretty big deal. So I'm going to start with A Child's Metamorphosis. A Child's Metamorphosis, tag your it, yelled at the top of his tiny lungs. Point punctuated with little footfalls and wood steps. Pass the ball. Youthful voice full of desire and entitlement. Middle school sneakers. Squeaking in gym. I can hang out. I don't need to study. Jovial with a whim and whimsical tone. High school exam week. Boots crunching loudly in the snow. I can skip today. Excuse the bubble frost socks gliding on the laziness, laziness tiles over the floor of hard work and college preparation. I could almost read that again. I can skip today. Excuses bubble forth. Socks gliding on the laziness tiles over the floor of hard work and college preparation. Trust me, I can drive home. Third word, slurred words, 
Even he, he, even he doesn't believe. His car door slams shut. Key is in the ignition. The engine started. How could this have happened? His friends and family wept. Dress shoes march on the funeral parlor carpet. Small children are bored, running around. Tag, you're it. Okay, I'm gonna quickly say, I may have saved this poem makes me think of a friend of mine's life who I saved. He was drunk like the guy in the poem. And I sat in his car so he couldn't get to his car keys. Well, my point with this young poet is I explained to a friend that just at a point when I needed, I need a formatter, and even if I never see him again, it's a worthwhile poem. This guy shows up with a technical ability. And Judy said, well, you cried out to the universe and it answered back. All right, I'm getting to the next thing I want to say is with the midst, with the Autumn, Autumn Lee's Writer's Workshop, uh, I just got, got comp, a fairly, a very positive confirmation from Christine Merrill. Uh, I'll just hold this up. It's not it's kind of a lousy picture but she's got 40 or 50 novels to her credit and about 25 of them in print. And she will be finishing a novel and will be one of our guests at Falling Leaves Writers Workshop. She's a wonderful, gracious, generous woman. She's helped me with some of my fight scenes in a way that really would have surprised me. Um, another one of, one of my guests, uh, at Falling Leaf Writers Workshop uh, is Bria Bam. I'm going to hold her up. She's kind of, I mentioned her in my video, and at some point we're going to have better cra uh, graphic capabilities, but this will do it for now, especially if I don't hold it to the screen and the timer. But Bria, I have mentioned in the, in the other video, and now I see that as I'm moving towards not so much time left, I'm going to talk a little bit about existentialism. And I'm going to say that when I felt the way I did two or three days ago, I realized that a key component about existentialism is the dignity of choice and what good and bad faith. The idea is that if you say that you have no choice, when you do have a choice, then you're in bad faith. And at about three in the morning, I guess two or three days ago, I realized that was true for me. And so what, what that meant is I was sitting feeling as horrible as I, as I could, as I was, that I would do my homework. I would actually read the studies that I had in Afro-American religion about something called the Azusa Street Revival. And what I found was in 1907, there was kind of an uh, evangelical Pentecostal racially inclusive movement that was founded in LA that spread throughout the world. And even conservative evangelic evangelists who would probably say that I'm going to hell for sure thought this was a great thing. I've been working with my friend Matt Filio. He's a representative and kind of a, a spiritual artist, one of the best in western Wisconsin. And we're probably going to be doing a graphic project of some form or other talking about uh, this Bishop Seymour and lost opportunities for fellowship and brotherhood. So I guess that's covering just about everything I expect to do in kind of a short period of time. But again, I invite you all to come to this uh, Falling Leaves Writers Workshop, the 3rd through the 5th of November because we're getting a great cast and the publicity is out there. You can find volume one covers an area of lots of square miles, almost most of western Wisconsin. And we're going to have a full house and it's free.